hey guys, there are a couple of important exceptions to the Octet rule that you just need to learn. Unfortunately, I can't really think of a way of helping you work these out, which ones are going to be exceptions, which ones aren't going to be exceptions, so I'm afraid you just have to learn them. On the face of it, SF6 looks like a perfectly normal, happy compound until you start to look a little bit closer. And when we look a little bit closer, you'll notice surrounding the sulfur in the middle, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 electrons. It is not obeying the octet rule. Here we have PCL5. Again, if you look quickly, nothing too extraordinary about it until 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons around the central phosphorus. It is not obeying the octet rule. And BCL3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons around the central boron. It is not obeying the octet rule. You have to learn these. But why is it okay for some things to obey the octet rule, but not other things? To understand why, I'm first going to talk to you about carbon and sigma bonds. If we look at the electron configuration of carbon and the 3D model of carbon, they don't really match up. Because in carbon we have a space here, a space here, and two spaces here for electrons. We've got a down electron, a down electron, and an up and a down electron. And up and down electrons have different spins. Whereas if we look at our bonds over here, apart from the fact they're pointing in different directions, they are four identical bonds. But we do not have four identical spaces because here we have an up space and here we have a down space. So what we are going to do is just move one of these electrons from here and excite it up to here a little bit. Now we have four identical spaces for electrons to go into. These are the four identical 2sp3 orbitals. And I can put one electron in there, one electron there, one electron there, and one electron there. And you can see they're all the same. And this is how we form sigma bonds or single bonds. If we take a second to look at the shape of the orbitals that we have in carbon, we have our 2s2 orbitals, the two electrons in there, our p orbital and our second p orbital. If we separate them out, you can see our sphere and our two dumbbell shapes for the shapes of the orbitals. When we excite one of the electrons from the 2s2 state up to the 2p state, we get this hybrid orbital. And there are going to be four 2sp3 orbitals. So instead of having a sphere and a dumbbell, we are going to get four identical hybrid orbitals that look like this. And then we have four identical sp3 orbitals. So instead of having this s orbital and these p orbitals, we have four identical sp3 orbitals. And these are what can form our sigma bonds. If we look at PCL5, the same thing is going on. Now, in when we draw the electron configuration, we have three identical spaces for down electrons here, but we have five identical bonds. So this electron here in the 3s state gets a little bit excited. It goes away and it moves up here to the 3d state. We now have five identical spaces down, 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 down for our electrons from the chlorine to come in and bond. One, two, three, four, five. In SF6, we have one, two, three, four empty spaces for down electrons, but one, two, three, four, five, six identical bonds that need to be made. So yet again, this electron here, the one that is in the 3s, just gets a little bit excited up there, giving us now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 identical spaces for down electrons to pop into when they are making the bonds in SF6.